Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we're gonna be doing some Christmas DIYs. Y'all are gonna love these projects, so let's go ahead and get into it. And I wanna thank Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. For this project, I'm gonna be using several items out of my stash, this cute Christmas tree, an old terracotta pot, this little grapevine wreath, and also this little metal gardening fence. I wanna create a garden kind of French country Christmas look. So I'm just trying to figure out how much fencing I need and I'm gonna cut this fencing down. I'm just using some wire cutters right here. I did get this fencing from the Goodwill bins, but if I can find it online, I will leave a link in the description. All right, we have a smaller piece to work with here. I think it's gonna be big enough. So what I wanna do is I'm gonna kind of straighten these little bottom wires out and I wanna actually push it into my grapevine wreath. So I got my wire all the way around the grapevine wreath. I just put it kind of on some end pieces cause it was really hard to get it through the center. But I guess it just depends on what kind of wreath you're using. Now I'm gonna take the wire pieces that are coming down and just put them around the grapevine wreath and this will keep everything in place. All right, it is looking good so far. Now I have these little extra pieces of wire right here. So that is perfect because I'm gonna take that wire and I'm going to wrap it around. This wire is a little bit thicker, so I definitely recommend having some tools to kind of help you use it. You could also use some little extra pieces of wire if you have it. This looks really great, and I personally like the wavy wire and the kind of handmade look. Now we're gonna take our pot, we're gonna put our little cloche over it, and then we are going to stick our Christmas tree in it. How cute is this, y'all? And besides the Christmas tree, it's not really overly Christmassy. So I feel like this is something you could use year round. And depending on the size of your wreath, you can make bigger ones, smaller ones, and make an entire collection using this fencing. I have a lot of this fencing left and I actually made a few smaller ones that will be available on the website if y'all want those. But I wanna make some more cloches and I wanna make this one a little different. So I took some more random items out of my stash. This is a wood round. It probably at one time had a glass cloche that goes with it. I don't have that glass cloche. And then I have this, um, it looks like a hand turned piece. I think it's supposed to be a bow. I don't know, but I'm thinking we should put these two pieces together to make a great little riser. So I'm gonna put some wood glue. Whenever I'm doing a rounded piece, like I'm making a riser, I always glue it upside down. That way I can make sure it is perfectly centered. I'm gonna let the glue dry for a few minutes, let everything hold in place, perfectly centered, and then I'm gonna come back with my nail gun and shoot a few nails in it. And now we have a great size wood round with this cute little riser. Now I do wanna kind of keep the wood look, but I need to bring these two pieces together. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a brown wash. This is the Fusion Mister, and I'm just gonna get the wood wet. That way it doesn't completely absorb the paint. It's gonna be more of a wash. I'm gonna put a little bit on my paintbrush too. This is fusion paint in the color chocolate. It's a dark brown. So now I'm just going to paint the entire piece with the chocolate and it's going to give it more of a dark brown look and bring these two pieces of wood together. All right, while the wood riser is drying, let's work on the cloche. So I've already cut it to the size that I need it. You just need to figure out the size of the circle and cut you some fencing. And then you're gonna be left with these kind of longer edges. And you're just going to wrap that around. And once again, we're going for a handmade look. 
So I'm not too worried about, you know, it having some wire right here. I've actually made closures before where I've added extra wire wherever, you know, to, um, pieces meet and that also looks really good. So if you have some extra pieces and you want to do that, you could. Look at this beautiful dark brown color. This is exactly what I wanted. You could still see the wood grain, but it's just kind of, you know, like staining it a darker color, except a lot quicker. So chocolate brown is perfect if you want the dark brown, but Fusion also has Woodwick and Algonquin that also make beautiful washes, but a lot lighter. I'll try to do these soon on a, another thrift lip video. Okay, so we got our riser and we have our cloche, but I actually want to put it this way where the little scalloped edges are at the bottom. But now we have this top that we have to deal with. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to cut the pieces down. Now we have these little sharp edges. I could have just bent the pieces of wire over, but I have a cuter idea. I have these little wooden beads right here, and I'm gonna add a little bit of hot glue to the center, and I'm just gonna put it over the wire. These beads actually came from a, a wooden Christmas garland that I bought last year at Walmart. It comes with all kind of different size beads and I am still using it. The last time I went to Walmart, I saw that they had them out and I wanna say they're only $10 and you get a ton of beads. So definitely go snag those up if they are at your local Walmart. And that just kind of added an extra little detail at the top. And I feel like you could use this cloche both ways. You could have it this way or you could have it this way. You could also use the cloche on its own. You could use the riser on its own. And also I use three different types of wood here. But because of the chocolate fusion wash, they all look exactly the same. Y'all, it's like a little Christmas tree fence. How precious is this project? I want to take a minute to tell y'all about the sponsor of today's video, Squarespace. Squarespace is who I chose to host my e-commerce store and when I started my website only had one tab the home decor section and since starting my website my business and website has grown exponentially and Squarespace had everything that I needed to accommodate that growth. Squarespace is extremely user friendly. So as I added more products, it was very easy for me to redesign and redo my website on my own. But if you do need help, Squarespace has an excellent help center as well as 24 hour customer service. And not only can you add physical products, but you can add digital downloads, you could add subscription based products. So whether you're big, small or growing, Squarespace has everything you need to run your business. So if you think you would like to start your own website, y'all go check out squarespace.com slash Julie's Designs and Signs, and they are giving my viewers 10% off when you use code Julie's Designs and Signs, and I will have everything linked in the description for y'all. Now let's get back to some Christmas DIYs. Y'all look what I found at Target, these beautiful glass Christmas trees that have this beautiful green color and also these little mercury glass ones. And then I took some spindles out of my stash. If you watch my fall pumpkin video, you know exactly what I'm gonna do with these. First step is to take these spindles to my miter saw and cut them down to smaller sizes. All right, I got two baskets of spindles. By the way, these cute little market baskets are actually available on the website. They're already rusty and crusty the way that I love them. So definitely go check them out. Now, I think these will be good for the green ones. Look how pretty that is. We have this fresh cut right here. So to kind of camouflage that, I don't know how much of it's gonna be showing, but 
I just want it all to blend together. So I'm going to add a little bit of water with my misting bottle and a little bit of fusion paint in the color cobblestone. It's kind of a light gray that I think would match really good with the color that's on the spindle. So I'm just going to quickly paint the top of these. That way we don't have this fresh cut wood color. All right, I got all the tops painted. While those are drying, we're going to paint these. So I want to put the mercury glass ones on top of these, and I'm thinking red will look so good. I'm going to be using Dixie Belle chalk paint in the color Rustic Red. It is a very, very deep red, and I might distress back some of this wood. I'm going to put one coat of paint on here and decide if I want to distress it, if I want to add another coat. But I'm thinking this red with this mercury glass is going to be very pretty. So I got the red painted and I love the color, but I did change my mind, which happens pretty often when I'm working on a project. I just love the rustic look of these spindles and I'm feeling like these spindles are just not matching. It's not the color, it's the shape. So I went and I cut out some more of the other spindles and I'm going to paint these spindles red. And I think the whole thing will look much more like a collection using the same type of spindle. I do want to keep a rustic look on here as well. So I'm just doing one quick coat on here. I'm not even worrying about getting full coverage or if I hit every spot. I definitely want a rustic look that's going to match with my other spindles. What I love about chalk paint is you could leave it as is for a cleaner look or you could wet distress it with sandpaper and wet paper towels and really give it a rustic aged look. I definitely feel like these pieces are looking like a collection now and we are ready to glue our cute little Christmas trees on. I'm going to be using Gorilla Glue and also a little bit of hot glue. The Gorilla Glue will permanently hold everything in place and the hot glue will just dry quickly and keep it in place while the Gorilla Glue dries. Now you could add tags and greenery to these like I did on the pumpkin ones, or you could just leave them as is. I think either way, they are going to look great and very unique in your home. I have this little cute galvanized half bucket and although I like galvanized, I much prefer it when it's kind of crusty and rusty. So since this piece is not, I think we're going to paint it and I want to use Dixie Belle chalk paint in the color caviar, which is a pretty black color. While my paint dries, I want to create a custom tag for my little bucket. I'm going to be using IOD's typesetting stamp and also the new winter adornment stamp. The first thing I want to do is I want to put the word Noel on here. So I'm going to get it laid out exactly how I want it. I'm going to take my thin mount and pick up the letters. Now they are on here. I think I'm going to actually, I'm going to do it in this holiday red. If y'all watched my last video I created this custom ink color and I will leave that linked in the description for y'all so I'm going to ink up my stamp and I'm going to turn it over and just stamp the center of this paper and this is some beautiful textured watercolor paper that I ordered on Amazon Wow, that came out so good. Now all of your stamps come with a mask. It's these little tiny things that cover up your stamps and they're kind of tinted a green color so you can actually find them. They used to be clear <laughs> and if you could imagine, they would get lost. So I'm going to put them over the word that I just stamped. Now I'm going to take this granary from the winter adornment stamp and I'm going to be adding some black ink to it. And then I'm going to apply it to the paper. Now where my mask are, the stamp is not going to go over that. As you can see, it looks like it is behind the letter. So I'm putting my O I'm going to clean off this because I don't want to get any ink on it. And then I'm putting my O back down 
and I'm going to stamp the other side. So if you never use masks before, as you can see, they are very, very easy. And the, the image that you want to be on top, that's what you stamp first. You put the mask over it, and then you do the image that you want behind. All right, my can is all dry. This is definitely a nice, deep, rich black. Now I want to just kind of distress it a little bit. It does have this ridge detail right here. So I want to bring some of that back. All right, now we need to add our label. I want to keep the edges raw. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a metal back ruler and you just put it on your paper and you tear it. And it creates a nice straight line, but it looks torn. So I'm going to do both sides of my paper. And then to attach my label created, I'm going to be using Fusion's decoupage gel. So I'm just going to apply it to my piece where, right in the center here, where I want to put this little label that I created. And with the IOD stamps, you can do tons of projects like this where you can make your own little custom labels and have it say and look exactly the way that you want. Make things that'll go with your style of decor. Look how good that looks. I love it. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the decoupage gel and I'm just going to apply it to the whole piece, the paper and the little tin and this will seal everything in. This is the Alpine Cedar Half Sphere. It is available on my website. I just love the natural look of the different granaries. They have a few little pine cones in here. It's just absolutely beautiful. And y'all, it fits perfectly in this little tin that I just made over. All right, guys, that is the end of today's projects. I hope y'all enjoy them. Leave a comment below. Let me know what's your favorite. I think my favorite were the cloches. I just love cloches. I never use them for practical purposes. You will never see me baking some cookies and putting them in a glass close. That's not going to happen. <laughs> I like them purely for decor. So these wire ones are perfect and you make them yourself so you can make them whatever size that you want to fit your specific needs i think it'd be amazing to do a whole oh my gosh y'all imagine an outdoor table with all the way down the center just these different size cloches and wreaths and then plants in the center of them oh it could be amazing if you do that please send me a picture and that is the great thing about doing DIYs is you can make everything to your exact needs. All right, I got a few new products and subscriptions that I would like to tell you about. First of all, if you loved some of the snowmen that you saw me styling in my video today, y'all, they are on the website. Now, it is one of the more expensive items on my website, however, they are handmade in the U.S. by a pair of sisters. They are just beautiful, unique, one-of-a-kind pieces that you can add to your Christmas collection. So y'all go check those out if y'all loved the snowman that you saw in today's video. Also, you know that I have the Fusion Colors of the Month Club. It has been very popular. I'm showing y'all ahead of time the November colors. So these will ship out at the beginning of November. It is Manor Green, Fork Yolk Red, we have Coal Black, and then we have Raw Silk, one of my favorites. I always put a very neutral white cream color in there. So these are the colors for November. If you want to join the club, it's $28 a month, and that does include shipping, and they are shipped to your door at the beginning of every month. Now, people have been asking if I could do this with milk paint. And instead of doing four colors of milk paint, what I decided to do is just do two each month. So these are going to be the November milk paints. It is Barn Red and Gustavian White. I love this color. However, you will also get the four 
fusion color. So it's called Milk Paint, Milk Paint Plus Fusion Color of the Month Club. And this one is $39.99 a month also includes shipping shipped straight to your door at the beginning of the month so if you already have the colors of the month club and you want to get the milk paint as well what you're going to have to do is actually cancel your colors of the month subscription and then come rejoin the milk paint and i will put in the description exactly how to do that or you could always email me i'll have my email address in there and we'll get you all fixed up so this is just a great way to kind of sample all kinds of different paints you could see which ones you love which ones you want to reorder you can also do lots of projects with just these six paints so Again, I will have everything in the description for y'all. And if you think you would like to start your own website, y'all don't forget to go check out squarespace.com slash Julie's Designs and Signs. And they are giving my viewers 10% off. And I will also have that linked in the description for y'all. Once again, I hope y'all enjoyed today's video. I had so much fun making these projects and I have some really good ideas for next week's video. So I will see y'all then. Bye guys.